Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, all right, so good morning to our students here online as well. All right, so let's just begin with a word of prayer. So just leave it open. Any one of us can please pray before we start. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us. And uh, Lord, as um, as we've gathered here together to um, learn more about you, more about your word, Lord, I pray that you open our minds, open our hearts to be able to understand uh, what you have to say through Pastor Paul. And um, thank you, Jesus, for your presence here, that you're with us. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So... Last week, we've been talking about, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about from the cross to the throne. Uh, we talked about paradise, Abraham's bosom, uh, how, what is happening right now, where do we go after we pass, where are those who are, you know, going to be after the, those who don't believe in Christ, where are they going to be? So we talked a lot about that. Let's get into chapter 16, the power of his resurrection, right? The power of his resurrection. Now, we see that Jesus, right? He came, he lived this wonderful life. He died on the cross and he rose again, right? Now, what is there in the resurrection? What, why was it just, why wasn't it, you know, this Jesus died on the cross, paid for our sins. And when we believe in him, we will be new creation. Now, the reason is, Death had to be overcome, right? So what, what the enemy brought in was death. Jesus overcame that by resurrecting from the dead. Now, it was not for a show, right? It was not like Jesus is saying, okay, I'll do this because I want to do it. No. There is power in the whole aspect of resurrection, right? So let's look at that. What is one of the, you know, the, the greatest testimonies for us as Christians is that Jesus has resurrected from the dead and he's alive. Right? Don't you feel that's the greatest testimony? Is there any other testimony bigger than that? Not really. Right? Let's look at these points. First one, resurrection power in the early church. Now, when the Lord Jesus, he resurrected, before resurrection, he was walking in the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. And after the resurrection, what did he do? Acts 1.8, he said, I will pour out my spirit and you will be witnesses, right? You will receive power to be a witness. So along with the resurrection power, he is imputing in us the authority that he walked in. He's imputing in us the, the, the same sonship, the same spirit that he walked in, he's imputing in us. Some of you, any of you remember the word impute? I remember we talked about it. Impute. Impute means to just give it. Is this uh, the name, the authority is just given. Right? So if there's a CEO of a company and then uh, he decides, my son will take over the business. Now this person doesn't know anything about business. But the CEO has decided, hey, this fellow will be the next leader. What will happen? He just imputes that authority upon him. Whether he knows, whether he doesn't know, that is secondary. Right? So imputed is just given. The same way the resurrection power is just given to each one of us. Right? And we see that in the early church. Right? There are plenty of verses. Let's read a couple of them. Acts chapter 2 Verses 22 to 36. Maybe one of us can read that. Acts 2, 22 through 36. Acts chapter 2, 22 to 36.
disease is delivered up according to the definite plan of foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of flawless men. God raised him up, losing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Can you read that again? We we couldn't hear anything what you said. Acts chapter 2, verse 22 to 24. 20, 36. 36. 36 to? Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, diseases whom you crucified. Hmm. That's it? Okay. Let's read Acts 3, 1 through 16. 3, 1 to 16. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, 1 to 16. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, that is called the beautiful gate, to ask arms of those enter, entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive arms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, except expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up to the stood, up he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for arms and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him okay uh, we'll stop there so the point is all these chapters talk about what the disciples did after the resurrection right and when you go on through the book of acts we see so many miracles picture peter he's walking and the shadow of his of his is healing people right the apostle Paul gets bit by a snake, he takes it, throws it away. They did wonderful miracles. How? Because the resurrection power was there with him. Right? And after the early church, we see that you know a lot of things came in. The church was, you know, uh, controlled by other people, the Romans, and all of that. Yet, the next point: the resurrection power is available for all believers. Right? It's available for all of us. All of us can tap into this resurrection power. The power that God exerts towards us who believe is the resurrection power. The same power with which Christ was raised from the dead. Imagine that. right? Imagine Jesus. His body is lying there in the tomb. The same power that God the Father used to exert, to make this body of Jesus come back alive, that same Holy Spirit is working in you and me, right? And this power is available for all of us. Now, the point here is, it is available, but we have to tap into it. Understand, right? It's available. It's there. But we have to tap into it. And if we want to walk in resurrection power, we have to tap into his power. And when we tap in, we receive. If we don't tap in, we're not going to receive. Right? Revelation 1, 17 and 18. Let's read that. It's a wonderful verse. Revelation 1, 17 and 18. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on a stone a new name written which no one knows except him who receives it. Yeah. So he's talking here about, in Revelations, the Lord Jesus is trying to bring out the whole aspect 
uh, he's talking to the churches there. He's saying, uh, verse one, uh, chapter one, verse seventeen says, when I, Revelations one seventeen, when I saw him, I, what did you read? Okay, one seventeen, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and hell. Now, this is the first time, this is the beginning of the, of the revelation that John is getting through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. And when this entire chapter portions before that talks about how Jesus looks in his glorified form, and then he 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 tells John here, very powerful, right? When I saw him, I fell at his feet as if dead, but then he placed his right hand. Verse 18: I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Right? What a, what a powerful verse, right? Now to have the keys means to have authority, to have power. Right? We've talked about it before. When you have the key, you have the authority. Who has the key to this Bible college? One of you has it. You have authority. Right? Whoever has the keys. Now in the natural, keys is authority. And the same way in the in the in the spiritual. When you have keys, the Lord Jesus is saying, you have the power of death and hell. You have the power. And so it's like Jesus is taking the key and he's giving the key and he's saying, here, you use it. Again, if we have the key and we behave like we don't have the key, nothing can be done. Right? Imagine Jesus is saying, I'll give you the key. Take the key. Okay, thank you, Jesus. And put the key in your pocket. And then we go about doing everything. Say, God, please help me. What's happening? The Lord Jesus is saying, hey, I gave you the key. All you need to do is start opening it and tapping it. No, but I can't open the key, Lord. The lock is too hard. No, you've got to try. You keep trying. Use the key. Don't just leave it in your pocket. Right? Resurrection power is the power that comes, that overcomes all power of the enemy. Resurrection power is the power that overcomes working of sin and death. You know, every time we, we'll talk about uh, uh, the blood as well, next uh, section. Every time we take the Lord's table, what are we emphasizing? What are we declaring? His death, his burial, his resurrection. What do you say? Let, let his resurrection power flow in and through us to bring healing, to bring deliverance. Right? How many times, you know, it may have happened to us where, you know, we've been going through this probably a mental pain or a physical pain, and you've taken the Lord's Supper, immediately the pain has gone. How many times has this happened to you? It's happened to me many, many times. Right? And I'm sure it's happened to you, you just don't realize it. There are times when I come in, I'm just so tired and weak and got body pains. And we take the Lord's table. What are we declaring? His resurrection? Power. So all of a sudden, you know, hey, I didn't pray for it. I didn't pray, Lord Jesus, please heal my body. Or please remove all my sickness. I didn't pray. But when, I'm, when we are taking part in the Lord's table in faith, we are tapping into the resurrection power. What happened to that, the portion that we just read? Peter and John went to pray. They met this layman and brought healing through the resurrection power. Right? And so <clears throat> some of the things, uh, we'll talk about this even in the Lord's table, but some of the things that we can do to tap into this resurrection power is partaking in the Lord's table, continuing in prayer, continuing in you know, how many of you, God has really spoken to you during this month of prayer? It should have happened, right? And you make a note of it. I've made a note of so many things that God has spoken to me. I believe that, you know, I need to tap in to receive more. God has spoken. 
God is ministered, but it's not going to end there. No. Yes or no? Right? We need to tap in. We need to ask more of God. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, the resurrection power has been made available to all believers. All believers. Every one of us can tap into resurrection power. Now, one of the most common questions that people ask is, how, but everyone have a different kind of anointing. Some are called to be worship leaders. Some are called to be pastors. Some are called to be evangelists. Some have the gifts, right? The gift of the prophetic, gift of uh, you know healing and miracles. What about that? Yeah, that's true. But the the point we're trying to do bring out is it is the same Holy Spirit, right? It's the same Holy Spirit. All I'm doing is we're tapping in through different means, right? And He releases those gifts. I, I I never understood, you know, I remember as a young man, uh, I just became a believer and I would watch these videos, all these healings and miracles and all happening. I was like, man, how are these guys doing it? Right? I'm so confident. There'll be some lame person, they'll just say, hey, you just pray and they're running on the stage. They're wondering, how are they so confident? And they, the preacher will ask also, do you want to see yourself healed? Do you want to see God working in your life? Do you want to be healed? And they'll say, yes, I want to be healed. And the next thing you know, they're running. And there are people who are deaf who are here. I always wonder, how are they doing it? It is only through tapping into the power of the Holy Spirit. Nothing else. There's no magical potion. There's no formula. Nothing. Right? And many times I, I, I thought to myself, hey, can I pray for, like this? Can I get, you know, pray for people and you know they be healed? Can I pray over those who are oppressed and possessed? Will, will they be healed? What must I do? Right? So initially, you know, I lost a lot of uh, faith trying, trying. But then remember that this resurrection power is available to everyone. There is no criteria. You know what is criteria? Finish this, 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 only then you will get it. No, no criteria. All of us can. Right? It really doesn't matter. The working of the resurrection power. Jesus is the resurrection and he walked in resurrection power before his death and burial and eventually after his death as well. Right? He walked in this resurrection power. And when you look, when you read, you know, uh, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and you read his ministry, the, the, there is no place where Jesus is afraid. There's no place where he's not walking in authority. Right? Now, what about on the cross? You know, it, they have crucified him. He's on the cross. They've beaten him. He's nailed to the cross. It looks like he's not in a place of authority. But actually, he is in a place of authority. What is he telling those soldiers? He's saying, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. It is a place of authority. He's standing in a place of authority. Now, could he have come down from the cross? All of that? Yes. But who's in authority right now? It was Jesus. Because he knew what he was accomplishing in the spirit. In the flesh, it looks like a failure, but in the spirit, it's victory. Right? He walked in resurrection power. Now, you and I can also walk in resurrection power. What is the enemy doing against you, in you, and in, in what is yours, in your circumstances, etc.? What are the challenges that you are facing? What are the mountains that you are seeing? What are the insecurities that we are feeling? I'm sure we all have, no? Something or the other, we, we feel, oh man, God, how will I? I mean, look at the future, man. So much is there to do. You know, to go back, you know, probably get another job or start a ministry, start from zero. When will that ministry build? When will it become 100, 200,000 people? 
and then when will i get married when will who look after the children and then sometimes you just get tired oh man and then we have mountains we have challenges somebody is not well parents are unwell <clears throat> financial problems all these kinds of things come the point is when the enemy is trying to pull these things against you remember the resurrection power is available it is available all we need to do is tap in it's like you know i always picture it this way there's a boat and if I want to cross the sea, I just need to get into the boat. But what's the point of me standing there at the seashore and saying, oh man, I wish I could go to the other side. And then there's somebody in the boat saying, come, I'll take you. No, no, you. I don't want you. But how can I go that side? At the boat, the, the fisherman or that man in the boat saying, hey, look at me. I will take you. Give me your things. Give me your baggage give me your luggage just jump into the ship or the boat take you you'll go no time you'll reach there but they say no i don't want you how can i get into the other side of the does it make sense this guy's going okay go do what you want i'm telling you i'll take you you're not coming you're just saying you're just looking at the other side oh such a nice place is greenery there are coconut trees there's so many fruits and vegetables. Such a beautiful place. How do I cross this place? <laughs> and the boat is saying, you'll forever be like this only. I'm giving you a chance. Okay, I'll give you another chance. I'll go. I'll come back. Second round, you want to come? No, no, you don't come back. It's okay. I just want to know how will I go there. It's not going to make sense. right? The same way, the enemy is going to keep bringing things at us. You may end up in this place where there's a sea, there's you don't know where to go. God is going to bring people. God is going to bring people. Right? All we need to do is tap into that power. This power is available that can just overthrow the plans of the enemy. Right? It overthrow. What is the meaning of overthrow? When when you know when it like like the stable is here, if I just push it down. Everything's going to fall down, right? So it's like the enemy, he has set out his plans. And I'll do this, 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 and this. Four part schemes against this person. So this one, two, three, four. These are the four areas I will attack. He set it on the table. But the moment we tap into spiritual, the resurrection power, it's like we're taking that table and throwing it away. We're toppling, destroying the plans of the devil. And suddenly the devil needs to use another trick. He needs to use different ways to bring this de deceiving. Right? So he'll try to send spirits of fear, spirits of torment, spirit of uh, you know, uh, laziness, lethargy, all, all kinds of things. Right? But the more we are tapping into his power, his resurrection power, the more we'll be, over, be able to overcome the works of the enemy. Okay, now let's look at what was chapter 17, uh, the present day high priestly ministry of Jesus. What is Jesus doing in heaven right now? Relaxing? Uh, let, him, let him be there. Okay, I've done my part. I've gone through all the challenges. <clears throat> I've paid the price. I've defeated the enemy. I've come back to heaven. I'm seated on the right hand of the Father. I'm united back to my place of authority. So now let's relax and let the world go on, let things go on. And I'm just there watching people pray. I will send my anointing, I'll send my word. My word also is there. Angels are there. They will do their part. Everything's fine now. No. We see in the book of Hebrews, he talks it so powerfully. In the old covenant, there was one high priest to represent the entire nation of Israel. One high priest. So what does he do? He'll intercede for the people of the nation. So right now, the Lord Jesus in heaven is our high priest. He's doing the ministry of the high priest. That is what most important one. He is making intercession for you and me. 
He doesn't have to do that, right? But he's doing it. He's making intercession. He's standing on behalf of you and me in heaven. All right, let's read this. First born from the dead, Colossians 1.18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. That in all things he may have the preeminence. Right? So he's the firstborn of the dead. So right now, the Lord Jesus is doing the ministry. He's a he's a, what does it say there? The first part? First portion, one eight. One eighteen, sorry. He says, and he is the head, head of, the body. of the body, the church. Right? Yeah. He's the head of the body. So right now, as an earthly, uh, as the high priest, he's the head right, of this entire body. The church, the body of Christ, he's the head. Right? And when you look at the old covenant, the high priest had the most, the highest responsibility. Right. So in the old covenant, you had the nation of Israel. There were different aspects. But when it came to ministry, right? so there was the army, there was uh, legislation, there was law, there was all kinds of things. Right? But when it came to the ministry, the high priest was the head. Right? In certain cases, the high priest was also involved in making decisions for the army. Because the high priest will pray. What should we do? God, give us direction. Right? And then they'll pray, okay, you do this. Who was a prophet, priest, and a king in the old covenant? One person. Prophet, priest, and he was a prophet, he was a priest. Oh, prophet, priest, and he's not a king, but prophet, priest, and a ruler. Oh, thank you, Zarek. Okay, Samuel, right? He in the old covenant, he was all of it, right? Uh, now, remember that you know even in the old covenant, we see that uh, Samuel tells the king, tells Saul, "You go here, you do this, or you don't go here." So then you see that there was this rulership, leadership involved. And the Lord Jesus, that's what he's doing right now for us. He is the head of the body and he will do what he wants to do in the church. Now, the best part is he's not keeping it a secret. I will tell you after 10 years. No. Saying, hey, you pray, you ask of me, I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. Ask of me, I will pour out my spirit upon you. The, the, the glory of the latter day will be greater than that of the former. So he's already, he's already decided what he's going to do, right, as the head. Secondly, the hope of the resurrection. There is a real heaven and a real hell. There is a real eternity that we all must face. So when we see the Lord Jesus, he's there in heaven. And on earth also he ministered, he said, he talked about heaven and hell the most. So you and I can, can you know, affirm and say, okay, there is a resurrection. There is a heaven, there is a hell, there is a place that we will go to. Thirdly, the, as a high priest, he has given us authority over hell and death. So when you look at hell, when you look at death, he has given us authority over it. Right now, all authority belongs to him. All authority belongs to him. There's no way that you know uh, a, a demon or a devil, the work of the enemy, if, unless we don't we allow it. There's no way that the devil can overpower us. He can tempt us. He can bring accusations, but he cannot overpower us. He cannot overtake us. He cannot, you know, possess us to a place where we say, okay, you know, uh, I'm not in a place of, uh, be, you know, coming back to healing. Never. 
because you and I as believers, all authority belongs to Jesus. And as a high priest, he is making intercession for us. Imagine that. He's, so for example, I pray. Say, Lord Jesus, no. These are the things I'm going mentally. I'm going through a lot of problems. I feel insecure. I feel weak. So I'm praying to the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus is making intercession in the sense he's there and he's praying on behalf of us to the Father. And he's saying, Father, I know how this feels. I know how tiredness feels. I know how they are feeling mentally troubled. When I was in the Garden of Gethsemane, I, I sensed that. I know. I went through it. Right? And he's making intercession for us. Basically, he's saying, Paul, don't worry. Just hold on. I'm there with you. I'm with you. I will not leave you. Right? You just continue to hold on to my word. I'm there with you. You may feel you're alone, but you're not alone. Right? And you and you get these words from God that so much of strength. Imagine that, right? You're so weak, you're so tired, mentally feeling just weary. And you got the Holy Spirit, God Himself, making intercession for us. And then He'll tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, He begins to minister to us. Holy Spirit is telling me, telling me to tell you that this is the verse you read. Then we open the Bible. Oh, behold, I have carved you in the palm of my hands. A father or a, a nursing mother may forget you, but I will never forget you. Imagine reading those verses. What happens? It becomes revelation. He's making intercession for us, right? His name is above every other name. And you and I have been given this authority to use that name. Peter used the name of Jesus. Later on, the, all of the disciples used the name of Jesus. Today, that same name is still effective. And this is the proof of his resurrection. Imagine we use the name of somebody who is dead. In the name of Peter, rise up. I command you, devil, get out of this person's body. The devil will say, who's Peter? It doesn't work. Peter, the one of the 12 disciples, the one who walked on water, he was next to Jesus. No, no, no. I will not go. The devil will say, no, I'm not going. Why? Yeah, he had authority, but his name is nothing. Right? Meaning it, 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 there are names higher than that. So, so for example, we know the highest person in, in authority. Will you go to his secretary and talk to him? Or will you go to the highest person? Hey, I know the highest person. Might as well go there. You'll reach the highest so that everything will you know, work out. Remember Nehemiah, the old covenant? What did he do? He's the cupbearer in the king's palace. He didn't say, OK, I know the king. Uh, if I go to him, he may kill me. So let me ask his officials first. No. He said, I'll go first to the king. If I die, I die. What did Esther do? Same thing. I'll go to the king, to the highest leader. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Right? Now, here, the commission to the church, you and I, is to use this name, the name of Jesus. But again, do we know the name of Jesus? Do we know the authority it carries? Right? Uh, you know, sometimes uh, we wake up early morning for prayer. And we wake up, oh my. No, sometimes what I do is I say, I command you sleep, get out of my mind in the name of Jesus. Imagine waking up early morning, oh man, I want to sleep, Lord. Tired. Sleep, it's okay. But then you say, in Jesus' name. I command this sleep, I command this, you know, this feeling of tiredness or this feeling of uh, laziness to get out of my body. What happens? Still not sleep, Lord. 
it's it's natural then you say no devil i'm not going to listen to you you don't want me to pray that's the point right but now i'm going to use a name that's higher than what you're doing in jesus name i command you sleep get out of my mind get out of my body i pray in the holy spirit i pray with we pray with such authority and all of a sudden you know you feel like a lion you don't feel like one small person you know trying feeling looking at the pillow wanting to sleep so, oh man you know you've defeated the enemy what a feeling that is happened to me this morning woke up at 3 am i didn't know where i was so, oh god i slept only at 12 o'clock Three hours of sleep, Lord, please help me. I said, no. I've got to prove a point. So was I sleepy? Very sleepy. I said, but in Jesus' name, I take authority. Now you give me a pillow, I'll sleep within a few minutes. But I'm happy I over I defeated the enemy that this morning. Defeated, crushed him. He tried his best. Sorry, devil. In the name of Jesus. And that's such a good feeling. Such a good feeling. Open my eyes at 6.30. I said, wow. Devil, where are you now? You didn't want me to pray. We had a nice time of prayer. I know that God is with me. Right? I am tired, but you are defeated. And that's, that's the name that you and I can use. Right. Now, when we don't use that name, okay, God, next time I'll meet you tomorrow morning. You got to use the authority. Now, Jesus is our high priest. Hebrews 9.25, let's read that. And also let's read Hebrews 10, 1 through 4. Okay, we'll go a little quick. Hebrews oh, 9, verse 25. Not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters a most holy place every year with the blood of another. Now that he must, what does it say there? Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again, the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood that is not even his. So the high priest would go again and again. But now, once. You see the difference here? Here, the high priest would go every time with some goat's blood, right? And pour that offering, fear and trembling, and he will run away from that place. Oh, thank God. Now God has forgiven the sins of Israel. But here, the high priest has gone once and for all. Once and for all. Taking his own blood. Precious blood that has no sin no sin whatsoever there is not a spot of blemish in his blood takes his own blood and it's like he's saying i'll wash this entire place no more blood required no more price required i don't have to come in every time it's done it's finished it's like jesus took he poured the blood, cleaned up the whole place. Now you can enter the Holy of Holies. You can enter into his presence. Jesus is our high priest daily and brings our worship and prayers to the Father. What a wonderful thing. Imagine we are praying. He brings, why God the Father can't hear? He can hear. But he brings our prayers to the father as a high priest he brings our worship imagine we're singing oh, father we love you if we're singing he's bringing those songs of worship he's saying look at this person god look at this person he's worshiping you let's just, just be enthroned let's be enthroned in his worship you may be alone in your room crying and praying he's there making intercession Look at him, Lord. Look at him, Father. He's, he's crying. He's weeping. Pour out your presence upon him. 
He's making intercession. Right now, we must understand this Trinity. It's not like it's separate, right? It's not like Jesus saying, Father, you pour out your spirit. No, it's it's a way of looking at it. Three in one. All three of them are rejoicing in what you're doing, in your worship, in your prayer. Right? In John chapter 20, 11 through 15 and verse 17, he says, Don't touch me, because he hadn't yet descended to heaven and taken his blood to the Holy of Holies. But once he had entered, he never has to enter again with an offering of sin. The Father has accepted this perfect sacrifice. In the Old Covenant, did, the Father, uh, did, did God accept the sacrifice? Yes. There was a covering. But he had to come back again every year. Every year he had to come back again. This time he doesn't have to come back. Right? He has opened the way so that we all can come boldly into his holy presence. As our high priest, he represents us, our prayers and petitions before the Father. And I think this is so wonderful, right? With Jesus as our high priest, we can always go to him at any time, any way, in all our weakness, tell him, this is what I'm going through. And he brings those petitions to the Father. Jesus is our mediator. Mediator means to go between. He's the mediator between God and man. Let's read 1 Timothy 2, 5, very uh, common verse. We always refer to this, 1 Timothy 2, 5. First Timothy chapter two verse five. Yeah. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Now, what did Jesus do? He bridged the gap. Because of sin, there was a separation. But as a man, as a mediator, he bridged that gap. He looked at that gap and he, and he said, hey, I will mediate for them. I will come in between. He was the only one who could do this because he was equal with God and he was equal with the man. Right? He has represented us holy and without blemish. He was the only one who could do it. Was Jesus fully God? Was he fully man? Beautiful, no? Jesus was fully God and he was fully man. It's not like Jesus could say, okay, Father, thank you for the food and his stomach is full. No, he had to eat. He didn't snap his fingers and next thing you know, he was in Samaria. No, he had to go. He didn't call the angels and say, angels, one way trip, like Uber. One way trip, just take me from Jerusalem to Judea, I'll be there in a few seconds. No. He, he was a man. Right? It's not like he was awake the whole, all his life. No, he had to sleep, he had to eat, he had to walk, he had to do everything that a man does. He was fully man, yet he was fully God. In what aspect was he fully God? He was without sin. No sin in him. Right? And he was the only one who could do it. Jesus could have been our mediator, uh, could not have been our mediator if he hadn't first cleansed us from our sin in his precious blood. As our mediator, he lives to see his covenant enforced for us in our life. He's, the only, he's not only the one who wrote up the covenant, but he's the one who died in the covenant himself. He himself came to ensure that this new covenant is put in place. So beautiful. Jesus didn't say, okay, this is what God didn't say. This is what the new covenant is going to be. A man will come. He will die on the cross. He will resurrect from the dead. And through him, you will find salvation. Yes, he wrote that. That was the plan. But what did he do? He himself came to enforce it. He said, okay, now I'm coming. I will enforce this law. 
I will enforce the whole thing. So nobody can say, I did it for you. Because he was the only one eligible to come without sin and die on the cross. Jesus is our intercessor. Uh, he was made sin so that we could be made righteous and receive forgiveness. He took our sickness that by his stripes we are healed. He became poor so that we can be rich. He took the curse so that we could receive all his blessings. He intercedes for us in our times of weaknesses, challenges, so that we can be strengthened. And this happened so many places in the in the new covenant as well, right? Look, remember Peter, he's in prison. Jesus himself comes. Remember uh, the apostle Paul? Oh, in his weakness, he says, I was caught up in the third heaven, right? So he himself is there to help us. And now with the Holy Spirit, all we need to do is ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me. He comes with his gifts. He comes with his fruit. He comes with everything that he has. It's the greatest gift that we can have, right? God in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Last point, Jesus, our advocate. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. An advocate is one who defends us. If you look at a natural court, you have an advocate, you have a judge. The judge is sitting there, but the advocate is the one defending us. Have you seen those courtroom uh, videos? And so you'll have three, four advocates there, and then they'll go. The, the guy who's been charged will be sitting there, and they'll keep talking. What are they talking? Is what he's saying true? Did you send that message or did you make that call? Maybe talking. And then this man will, advocate will say, come in front and say, he hasn't done that. There's no proof of this. So there's false allegations. What's he doing? He is defending the person who's been you know, charged. Now, as an advocate, Jesus is defending you and me. God is looking at sin and saying, I'm going to wipe this guy out. He's committing sin continually. And sin has to be dealt with. But Jesus is our advocate. He's standing and saying, no, no, you can't do that. Because I took up his, he believes in me. He's just going through a difficult time. He's living in sin. That's true. But as an advocate, I'm standing here and I'm, I'm representing him. So you cannot punish him now. So I'm standing there. Jesus is our advocate. If we sin, we, ha we have Jesus, our defender, before the Father. Now, Christian walk, there will be times when we fall into sin. Sin does not break the relationship that we have with God, but it breaks the fellowship we have with God. Right? Understand that. Sin does not break the relationship, but the fellowship is broken. Why? Because... It's sin. The fellowship is marred. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's broken away. But again, fellowship is always restored. We go back to the Father. When, we, when our fellowship with God is broken, we come into condemnation. But what do we have to do? We just have to confess our sins, go to Jesus, say, Lord, you are faithful and just to forgive my sins. And as a father, he will stand there forgiving us because Jesus is defending us right so what a what a wonderful uh, you know place we are in we're not in a place of condemnation but we're in a place where we can receive tap into this resurrection power that God has for us right all right let's take a break we'll come back and continue from the next chapter